I think you gave me a, 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 I think you introduced me so my name is John Mattis. Uh, I am a beach body coach. So I started my journey in August of 2015. And so I've been on my journey for what is it, 20 months now. Uh, so the way I sort of wanted to structure this is just tell my story just the way I lived my story so you get a feel for what I did in my journey because I think when I explain like my thought process, what I was thinking, when I was starting, when I was going through the process, I think that's more important than just telling you, oh yeah, I lost this much weight and I did this and that. I mean, you know, I have lost a lot of weight um, over the time. I think that's, you know, way more beneficial and important for people. So, hold on one second. I'll tell you, let me go inside. Uh, I'm going to go inside really quick. No so problem. A, a no problem. While you're doing that, um, I didn't give him a proper introduction. So, it is John Mattis, and he basically has been on this journey it'll be two years in august he has lost close to 200 pounds about 190 pounds with beach body and he is a beach body daily uh monthly quarterly and uh challenge winner so he's gotten paid for his transformation and he's been featured for his transformation but the big one is the one that they do at summit where it's a hundred thousand dollars and he may be a finalist for that one for his transformation so i also just wanted to give you guys a little background and why um also um how i met john is i, I met john at the uh at the beach buddy uh success club trip in punta cana just a little background that was very i had promised the girls on vision dynasty that i would be showing them shift shop and i i don't know my stomach was just like it was killing me the night before and um i was like okay well i hadn't gone the, the two days prior i was like i had to go that day and I'm glad I went. I walked all the way to the front. I met up with Nina. And that's where Nina, you know, Nina also has an amazing transformation. Nina not lost about 80 pounds, but she introduced me to John and she told me his story. And I'm like, wait, what? A hundred and what? I was like, wait, a hundred? She's like, no, 190. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, I took a picture with John because I was like, I need to take a picture with you because that's an amazing transformation. Like I, that's my post right there. But I, John, I wanted to share with you that um, after that shift shop workout, I was exhausted and I wanted to leave. I was like, oh, I worked out with Autumn the other day. And then Nina and you, I saw you guys, you guys were there with me, you know, during, you know, shift shop and you guys stood there. I looked and I'm like, okay, Chris is, I mean, John is still here. He was during the, the Chris uh, Downing workshop. Nina's like, Valentina, it's amazing that I can do this. And I thought of you and I thought of her and I'm like, wow. I mean, I, I lost myself 47 pounds in my journey. Um, it's still, you know, pretty decent weight amount. Uh, but it's nothing compared to 70, 100, 190, close to 200 pounds. Like, that's amazing. And I'm like, what, who, would, who am I to walk out of this, you know, workout when they're standing right there because they can do it. And they're celebrating the fact that they can actually do it. And I stood there. I, I sucked it up. I wanted to go get Shakeology. I had no more water with me, by the way, John. So I was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? And I don't know if you, you saw precisely Autumn Calabrese came right at me and started screaming at me because my knee, my, my knee highs weren't, like, high enough. And she's like, get those knees up. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then I remember during a part, we were, like, dying. And I turn over and I look at you and I'm like, all right we got this, you know, we cheered each other on. And, and that was just, that was amazing. That was like, honestly, it was one of like the biggest, most humbling experiences of my life because just to like work, work out with you guys, it wasn't even like, I don't care about like all the fit people. Awesome. You know, like for everybody that, that's fit there, but somebody that has such an, an amazing transformation story and to be working out with you guys and, and feeling the struggle with you too. And see you guys doing it and persevere, like that motivates me more than anything in the world. So I was like, I have to have him on a call. So with that, I give you back the floor, John, and I can't wait to hear your transformation. Well, I can't lie. I was in the last week of insanity, so I was in pretty good shape going in. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I was already used to doing it hours. So oh, man. <laughs> just for full disclosure. Oh, just, man. Uh, so I give you credit that that Chris, Chris, Chris Downey was was pretty difficult. And then Autumn like brought it that day. And I'm like, really? Like, come on now. So. Yeah, I, th I thought it was mean because I thought, oh, like he did a lot of legs. So Autumn's going to do like upper body or something or cardio. Or, like, no, 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 no. It was vicious. It was yeah. Pretty, so yeah yeah okay so uh like i said i'm gonna tell my story just the way i tell it because i think it's important to understand the journey because what i found like when i tell my story and i just give like you know the billboard answers like people can't relate to it because people it's hard for them to comprehend losing 190 pounds and then the immediate feedback i get from people is well you're just special. You're different. Like I, like there's no way I could do that because, and, and they think like I'm special and I'm just not special. So I think it's easier to tell my story. And then when you think about my thought process, then you're like, oh, it's all the same. It's all the same junk in your head, uh, and it's all the same process. So that's what I wanted to share, just so you can know me. So, um, so you're gonna die and you're never going to see your nephew live. So those were the words that my sister told me on June 12th of 2015. So that was a few hours after uh, I had literally almost died from a massive pulmonary embolism. So I was sitting there trying to process what my sister was saying to me. Uh, as I laid there, I had many, many, uh, you know, all these cords in my arms, they were doing the e EKGs and everything, and just trying to process that as I laid there. And I wasn't even gonna sure if I was gonna live or die in that moment when my sister told me that. And then, but the thing was, when she told me that, to be honest, I wanted to die at that moment. I didn't wanna live. Um, because to me, sitting there at 420 pounds, just trying to think of like how I could do this or how I even got to that point. Uh, it just seemed to me more convenient to die. So I sat there and I was debating and the doctor had told me something after that. The doctor says, you should have died. I don't know why God chose you to live, but for some reason he chose you to live because I was literally 95% blocked in my lungs. And he was like, most people are dead at that moment. So I don't know how you even lived. So that got me thinking like, why, why did God spare me? Why did, you know, why did he want me to live at that moment? So after that moment, I got released from the hospital and uh, I had to make a decision. I, but at the same time, I was on exercise restriction. I couldn't do anything because I had suffered massive blood clots and, and a massive pulmonary embolism. So there wasn't a lot of options for me. So I remember the thing that my doctor told me. He said, he says, you just need to get a gastric bypass because it's obvious you have no self-control or can ever lose the weight by yourself. So at that moment, I'm like, I'm trying to process it. I'm thinking, well, partially I think it is true, but then there was a small, just a small tiny bit of me that says, who the fuck is he to tell me that I have to do this and I can't use it myself? So I told him, I says, I think that I can lose the weight myself and I can't make a decision like this just because you tell me I have to do it. So I shared that information with my family and they said, and sadly, my mom, all five of my sisters, a lot of my closest cousins, they all said, you should do the gastric bypass because there's no way you can do it. So if I was really thinking of ending my life, that was probably the right time for me to end my life because the people I love the most in the world, they thought so little of me at that moment. 
that I could not change. So I was really, at that point, I was like seriously suicidal and I was thinking like, I just need to end this. Like, what's the point of living at this point? So I just, I didn't have a plan. I like, I was like sort of like, you know, if you've watched The Walking Dead, they're like walking around and like they don't know what they're doing. And that's sort of like what I felt. Uh, but I had to come up with a plan. Um, and I had no clue what to do. Like, I had lost weight before, but it was always through starvation and other things. And I knew that wasn't sustainable at that point. So I just started moving. I mean, that's all I really did. I just took walks and instead of my daily 17,000 calories a day, I went down to like four or 5,000 calories. And that was sort of my plan at that moment. Um, and then on this magical day, on, at the end of July, I got off my exercise restriction. And literally that next morning, I turned on my computer like I always do. And I, like most people that have their homepage, my homepage was Yahoo that day. And I saw this story about this man that won $100,000 on the Beach Body Challenge, and his name was Casey Walker. And I was like, well, who is this guy? And it's a Texas man wins $100,000. I'm like, oh, we're in Texas, because I live in Texas. And then I read, the, I read the video, I read the story, and he literally lived like two, two cities over from me. And I was like, wow, like, is this real? Like, I sort of tried beach body programs before never did more than like three or four of the workouts before quitting but like are these legit i mean because i seriously thought like when i saw these infomercials it was all bullshit like there's no way you could make these transformations with beach body so i immediately i don't know what it was but i sent him a facebook i sent him a facebook friend request and then almost not thinking he was ever going to accept me i'm like oh this guy's like big time he's not even going to respond to me and literally like within two minutes he accepted my friend request i was like oh shit like what do i do now like this is real like and i didn't know what to say like i was scared like i knew i had to make a change but i didn't know if i was like i was still in that sort of in-between phase where like shit am i am i worthy to live you know and it was just a really messed up place to be in my head and so literally every day for probably five days, I wrote a long note just explaining like, like why I needed to lose weight, blah, blah, blah. And it, was, it seemed like a book, but it was maybe like five, six paragraphs. And when I was about to send it, I deleted it and closed my computer. I did that for five days. And then finally, I says, I thought, this is, this is fucking stupid. Like, I just need to, like, send it. And, like, whatever happens, happens. And so I sent it. And I don't know, like, I, I wasn't sure, like, what he was going to think or, like, because I never, like, really, because I was a loner. Like, for me, I was, I was a very lonely person, a very, you know, I didn't have a lot of relationships outside of work. Uh, I kept to myself and I was very introverted. So it was like very hard for me to share like what I'm thinking in my head with people. Now I do it all the time, which is like super weird, but uh, you know, that's all about embracing the change and embracing the process as you go through it. And literally like probably like, uh, it's probably like 15 minutes later, like he wrote me a letter uh, and I'll never forget what he said me said to me but this is why I tell people this is like so powerful like words matter what you say matter and if you're genuine and if you're real with people they're gonna like really understand what you're saying and so what he said to me he was like he's like wow bro like it took a lot of courage to say that and I believe in you, and I believe you can change. So up until this point, what I had told you before, everyone had discounted me and said, you can't change, go the dash your bypass route. 
He was the only person that said he believed in me and he believed I could change. And it was something about those words where I was in just like that. All I had to do was hear that words. It was something I was struggling with at that point. And then, uh, another uh, playing the music class. Sorry about that. I don't know what, what they're doing here. Like, it was nice, quiet music, and now it's loud. So I apologize for that. So, literally, what he had told me, he said, this is what you're going to do. Uh, just go and buy the 21 day fix. Uh, we're going to start the we're going to start the challenge group on August 3rd, 2015, and that's when my group starts. And that's when we're going to start. And then, um, hold on one second. Okay, I'm gonna change it. Um, I think he was trying to put on his baseball game. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I was saying, he said, start August August third. Well, August third, I was going to work to be in Vegas for a whole week. So I was I was already like, August third, August third doesn't work for me. And he says, I don't care. He goes, that's when the group starts, and that's when you're gonna start, and you're gonna make it work. Um, and so he, he had read my letter and he knew I needed to change. So he wasn't going to like, just give in to me and just let me run my program at that point. And so literally it was hell. Like, uh, I hated autumn every day for the first 21 days. Uh, every day I cried, I cried like a baby. I was disgusted with myself. I was like, how did I let myself go this bad? I couldn't even do the modifiers. Uh, and I had to figure out like modifiers of the modifiers. And it was really depressing. Like it was like depressing. And I just felt like I wasn't making, I, like I wanted to give up like every single day. But it was really funny. There was another guy in my, um, there was another guy in my group and he's my success partner now. He was like this, 57 year old man hadn't worked out in 20 years and he was still pushing play every day and just seeing that in the group and seeing other people struggling like a lady that literally had a broken leg and was still working out i was like how can i quit when i see these other people in the group and i was just it, it just kept me motivated but i didn't know I didn't even really look at the scale, like the whole 21 days, but the first 21 days I lost 20, 21 pounds and 23 inches in the first 21 days. Um, and then I was like, shit, well, maybe there is something to this. And then I asked my coach, Casey, and um, so those that know Casey, like he's like big into Shanti and insanity. And I was like, well, what do I do next? And he's like, well, you're gonna do what I did and you're gonna do T25. And I go, okay, I guess I'm doing T25. And like at this point, like I was so desperate. Like, who am I to like question someone that was successful? That was like the biggest thing. Like, he had proven to me that he can go through it. And if he's gonna tell me he can do T25 in the beginning, then I could do it. Well, I hated Sean T. I still hate Sean T uh, sometimes to this day, but I, lo I love Sean T a lot. But like, I really love Tanya though, because Tanya was the modifier on 225. And I just kept pushing play every day. I still had to modify the shit out of everything. Um, but like, I think it was probably like two weeks into beta, I was able to do like my first burpee. And I don't know, like, it literally, what is that? Five, six, like nine weeks before I could do my first burpee. And that was like the world to me. Like that was like a big breakthrough. And this is what I like. 
I try to instill in people is like people give up on themselves way too easy. Like it takes the process. Um, if anyone's read the slide edge, you have to read the slide edge. It's, it's consistent behavior over time, these small little things every single day, and you're gonna make process. And that's basically, I lived the slide edge, but I had never read the slide edge, but that was basically what I was doing every single day. And I just kept pushing play. Um, and that was sort of the thought process, but like once I got to that first burpee, like I was just on cruise control. I'm, I'm really, there's nothing really fascinating about my story since then. I just literally press play every day. Um, after that, I did P90X. Um, and after I submitted my results for P90X, that's when I won the daily Beach Body Prize. Um, and then after P90X, I did Insanity Max 30. Um, and after Insanity Max 30, I was already down about 168 pounds. So in about 10 months, I was down 168 pounds. Um, and I was sort of like, to be honest, like I was sort of upset. Like I didn't want a monthly after Insanity Max 30 because like, even though I wasn't, wanting to win the 100,000, I thought like, oh, like after max 30, they have to select me and like I'm going to go into 2016 and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to win this and, you know, do this in a year, but I didn't get selected and I was a little mad, but then I went, I went to 22 minute parkour, but actually what my coach had said, he says, he had told me ahead of time, they're never going to select you for max 30. They're going to hold you over to next year. And so, literally, the next time I submitted, I won my monthly. So, he was right about that. So, I won it for 22 minute parkour. And literally, I've changed my program every time. So, after 22 minute hardcore, I did hammer chisel, then I did punch and heat. Uh, then I did Ultimate Reset, then I did Size, then I did Insanity Asylum, I did Core Force, um, I did Body Beast, uh, and then I finished Insanity, and now I'm in P90X3. And, then, and so these are all really important things I have to tell the people is like, it's good to challenge yourself and not be comfortable with one program. I see too many people do 21 day fix, like 15 rounds. And I'm like, uh, you're gonna plateau. And as much as I love Autumn, and I secretly call her my fiance, I know doing 21 day fix, 15 rounds is not good for you. And you have to change it up. You have to challenge your your body. And that's why I constantly shift my programs. And that's why I'm constantly making progress. Now I've already lost a lot of weight, and to this point I've lost 190. Uh, but now I'm working more on like body fat percentage and other things like that, and more mental aspects of my journey. Um, and, and that's very important because it's not just a physical transformation, it's a mental one as well. And if you don't fix the mental stuff, that physical stuff, no matter what you try to do, is never going to work because if you're too stressed, if you're too anxious, uh, if you worry too much, uh, you're gonna raise cortisol in your system, you're gonna hold on to fat, you're not gonna lose weight, you're gonna plateau. Um, these things are gonna happen to you. Um, and that's why it's so important to fix the mental stuff. And like my transformation, it wasn't just a, a physical, but it was so mental too. Like I said, I cried, I was like emotional, have my little hissy fits I'd have you know I go through all these things like it was not easy the only thing I did that although I don't think it's special or the people think it's special I press play every day I literally every day I pop in a DVD and I do my workout I have maybe in 20 months this four workouts uh, my whole journey I literally even if I'm sick and I actually don't get sick that much because my nutrition is so dialed in that, you know, nutrition is so important that, that I don't miss workouts. But my transformation was mental. But if, if you talk about, like, the split, it's all about the diet. The diet is, like, 80%. Like, the physical transformation, 
eighty percent of it is going to be your diet. It's the workouts. They just they put the finishing touches on your transformation, uh, in my estimate, and just make you feel better like mentally. But a lot of it is diet, and that's sort of been my journey. And that's what I try to tell people is, you know, just don't give up on yourself. Like I wanted to give up on myself, and and I'm glad I didn't give up on myself. And somehow, like I said, like the doctor said, for some reason God saved you. And I truly believe that he saved me for a reason, you know, so that I could be here like this today and be able to share my story with other people. Or like I've been able to have uh, my video on the Beachbody Challenge site. You know, it's been on the Beachbody Challenge site. And I share my story all the day because I never know who's going to see my story. Just like I saw Casey's story, um, you know, who's going to see my story and who, whose life I'm going to be able to change. And, and that's so important. And that's the other thing I want to quote. There's a couple of things like always submit your results. Like even if you don't feel like that, submitting your results is not about yourself. Submitting your results is about saving someone else. And if you think about it in that mindset, then it's so easy to share your photos on Facebook. It's so easy to share your photos on Instagram. It's so easy to talk in front of people. Uh, if you get out of that, if you get out of the mindset of it being about you, and making it about other people. And that's why it's so easy for me now to share my results and to like I'll just take off my shirt and take a picture with people or whatever because it's not about me. It's about trying to help and inspire other people. Um, and I see a lot of I see a lot of people discount themselves. They're like, oh, uh, I know you guys have seen this in maybe your bigger groups. They're like, oh, super scared to share these results, but they're like amazing and they don't want to share them. And I'm like, and every single person I tell them, it's not about you, it's about the other people. Post them, you look amazing, you know, um, and get out of your head and, and, and worry about trying to save other people. And, you know, that's gonna help save people. Um, and that's, you know, and that's sort of my story. I uh, submitted my final picks about three weeks ago uh, to be considered for the finals this year. Uh, been going crazy waiting for a phone call for them to let me know I'm going to be a finalist but uh, they're not going to announce it publicly until June 5th so I guess I have like two more weeks to wait um, but the one thing is I'm not resting on my laurels I work just as hard today as I worked in the beginning like I'm not like oh I lost 100 pounds like no now I'm in cruise control that's not the way it works after you lose 190 pounds it's even harder and like when Valentina saw me work out and I look at the second one, I look forward to working out and I see workouts as my medicine and I sort of have that mindset and I'm like, it's my daily medicine that I have to take every day and that's what like helps keep the depression at bay. It helps keep, make sure I don't take my medicine. I, I don't have to be on medications uh, and it's just, it really helps me, you know, it helps keep me in a positive mindset every day um, that's you know that's my story I'd love to answer any questions that people may have um, you know I'll look in the chat really quick that was amazing thank you so much I did put in the chat yeah. if anybody wants um, I already have a few of my own so ladies again you can go ahead and um, you know post it in the chat or if you want let me see if it's not so noisy i'll mute all of you guys and you can just jump in um but i do have my the one of my first ones i have is so how or what like what made you not listen to the doctor when the doctor was like oh you have to get a guy gastric bypass surgery like that's what was your starting weight uh oh well somewhere above 420 that's where the scale stopped so I really don't know how much I really lost. All I know is the scale stopped at 420. So it was somewhere above 420. So, um, yeah, I don't, but really what really, I thought back to what my sister said about, and I really, I really do truly love my nephew. So if you've ever seen pictures of my nephew, he's like a dead ringer for me. And so I know you like moment I thought about my nephew and I thought about uh, you know what would he think of me if I um, 
you know, if I just took the easy way out, what type of example am I sending to him? And, you know, there's no guarantee of the gastric bypass because I saw my mom go through it and it hasn't been all rosy for my mom during the gastric bypass. And so I just thought about that. I thought about like, what would my nephew think? And so this sort of ties into another thing. Like, so after I won the monthly, uh, I was visiting, my nephew lives in California, so I was visiting in California. And we're just sitting there eating at Chipotle. We weren't even talking. And then he just says, Uncle John, I'm so damn proud of you. And he just said that. We weren't even talking about Beachbody. We weren't talking about, he just said it like at his own free will. And like when he said that, like I knew, I mean, I already knew I made the right decision, but that like even cemented it more, just kept me more grounded in my journey after he said that to me. That's amazing. That, and and I, I commend you for that because a lot of people I come across, they're like, oh, they've already had the gastric bypass or the sleeve or I know that all these different ones and and they're not even, they, they like their weight is not, that's why I had to ask your weight. And I remember Nina telling me like, but it, since it was like so noisy and everything in Punta Cana, I was like, wait, what? And she was like, like I remember her saying that it didn't measure, like you don't know exactly, like it went off the scale. And I was just like, oh my God. But for, so for you to be at that weight, you don't even know your own starting weight. Like I, I know people like in other shoes, like they would go directly for that gastric bypass, especially if the doctor's telling them though, well, that's what you're going to do because and oh my God, I, I wrote your notes, what you said that, and that, that really like ticked me too, where he said, because you have no self-control. That's what, that's what the doctor told you? Yeah. And, and, and I mean, there is a small part of me where like, I'm very, although it didn't seem like that, I have a very competitive streak to me. So just the fact someone telling me I couldn't do something was almost like a little reason for me to do it at the same moment. Mm -hmm. So if that makes sense. That, yeah, absolutely. So it looks like we do have a, a question here from Ali. So if you fell off track, how did you get back on? Um, off so in my journey, uh, I'm going to be honest, like the first 11 months, I never had a single cheat meal for 11 months. I ate clean, pure, top third of the list, 21 day fix eating for 11 months. And I never wow. had any added sugar. I never had a snack. I never had a yellow cheat, uh, treat swap, nothing for 11 months. So, um, and then after that, then I was like, okay, well, I've lost the weight. Now, I, this isn't realistic for me to like never cheat. So I just started integrating. But really, um, the one point I really did fall off a little was like December of last year. Um, and it was, it was actually after I went to Beachbody Corporate um, and did my video and did my pictures. It just brought up a lot of bad memories for me. And it brought a lot of, um, you know, just like negative things. And I was like, I'm a fraud. Like, you know, who am I to like do this video? Like, I'm not worthy. So that like my, that inner fat person in myself was telling me all these things. And I, I started tail spinning. But the thing that sort of brought me out of it, like, and that's the power of the group. That's the power of the Beachbody family. Like, people knew within like two weeks I was struggling. And they were messaging me, they were calling me, um, you know, and, and just asking and seeing how, how I was. And like, you know, my coach just like, just got me out of it. And he said, you know, snap out of it, you know, get your ass, you know, go work out, you know, and stop feeling sorry for yourself. And it really was the community that sort of like, I started going back into my old things, but it was the community that helped pull me out of it just knowing that there's so many people counting on me and uh so many people following me and you know if i were to give up then i really would be the thought at that moment right that's amazing they wow that's yeah one of my coaches said that the 11 months like that's i commend you for that and i have seen ladies i i have since i've been friends with john i do follow him and i've seen he travels a lot and when he's at, at airports and stuff like that, like everything he's doing and he's eating, like he, he's staying clean. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Like that's, that's amazing when you're traveling. Yeah. It's like the hardest part there sometimes, you know? But, yeah, uh, and, and I just like made like, 
I used to use that as an excuse for poor eating. And then on top of that, I had a pretty generous per diem and I got to entertain customers. So I just saw it as a free for all. Um, but then like, when you like die, like literally I like almost died. Um, you know, it changes your perspective. And then, then I was like, if I'm going to make this work, I got to figure out how to, and so like doing like the first week, like even though I didn't want to start in Las Vegas, that was actually the best thing for me was to start the first week in Las Vegas because I really had to think about exactly how I was going to do this. And it, I had to put a lot of thought into it. And it was like after that first week of Vegas, I was like, oh, like it's not terrible. Like I think I can maintain this. And so, like, just doing that first week in Vegas sort of set the belief in me that I could, like, do it. Um, and, you know, that's sort of, like, the thing I, like, try to help people with is um, a lot of people, they travel and they think there's not good options or they don't know how to integrate it into your travel schedule. Um, you know, and, it, and it's just how important is it to you? It, it always comes down to that. If it's important enough, it's really easy, like, there's almost a Chipotle anywhere. Like Chipotle is like money. Like there's a Chipotle almost everywhere in the United States. And that's like that or like dropping in a Whole Foods and eating at the salad bar. Those are like my two big snacks. Like if you don't know what to do when you're traveling, that's what you do. If you're at an airport, just get fruit, drink water, uh, have some nuts, you know, uh, you know, you can bring your own food with you through security. Most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. and so that's what people they're like oh I, I don't know what to do like it's decision overload when i get in the terminal you can literally pack your own meal and bring it through security and people don't know that and so when i travel especially when i'm on the plane i have my own container with my chicken and my veggies and you know that's what i that's what i do and, that's, you know, that's, those are sort of my biggest hacks and tips when you're traveling there's always a chipotle there's always a whole foods um so there's no excuses like yeah, it's a little boring eating Chipotle all the time, but like I said, like I literally, for me, and it's not going to be the same. Like for me, it was different. Like me, every day I was thinking, like, okay, this is a life or death decision. Like that's the way I framed it in my head for a long time, and like that's not going to be the same for everyone. Not everyone's going to go through the same traumatic experience, but I think people have the same self-limiting beliefs going into any weight loss journey. Those self-limiting beliefs are in everyone. It doesn't matter if you have 10 pounds to lose, 20 pounds to lose, or 100 pounds to lose. Everyone has those self-limiting beliefs when they start. And it's just about hanging in there long enough till you do believe. And then once you believe, then it's actually pretty easy. That's really good. Thank you so much for that. Now, with uh, speaking of belief, I know you mentioned the Slide Edge before as one of your pieces. So, any other book that you know that you feel impacted you on your journey or helped you the most? I guess in your on your weight loss journey. Yeah. So there's a couple of books. So actually, the first one that really um, spoke to me was. Uh, and I, some people say, oh, this is a male book, and it's really not. They're, um, with The School of Greatness by Lewis Howes. So the great thing about uh, The School of Greatness is his whole big thing is building in gratitude to your day. So when you wake up, you talk about five things you're thankful for. And before you go to bed, then you talk about five things you're thankful for as well. And the whole thing about gratitude it's hard to think negative when you're talking about being great, grateful for something um it's just the way we're hardwired because we're fight or flight beings if that makes sense mm -hmm. so if you're in a mindset where you're thinking oh i'm grateful for this it's almost impossible to think something negative when you're saying i'm grateful for something um, and I thought like that was one of the early PD books because at first I thought personal development was bullshit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but like, I thought it was, for, I thought it was for, for crazy people only. Yeah. And, but literally after I read the school of greatness, like I was like hooked on personal development. Right. I started reading a lot. So like, that's a good one. Slight edge compound effect. I mean, a lot of these are like classic beach body ones that people talk about. 
but then also it's also important to like when you're thinking about personal development it's not all going to be the emotional stuff sometimes it's just inspirational stuff and sometimes i just like reading the bible or sometimes i just like reading poetry or you know sometimes just listening to jazz music or something like that is personal development to me um and sometimes it's just quiet meditation you know taking a walk with my dog that's my personal development sometimes so it doesn't have to always be a book um, i think people always think oh it has to be a book but it doesn't have to be um, Right. And um, mind, so you are a coach because obviously and you are a successful coach because you were at the success club trip. Yes. You know, they've explained to my, you know, challengers and, and uh, other coaches, you know, I, I, I believe that like the top 10%, you know, of the whole coaching network are the yeah. ones that go to the success club trip, meaning those are the people that are working diligently their business. So you're in there. Uh, do you feel that coaching in general, you know, besides like beach, uh, the beach body community has changed your life? Like how, or how has that helped you in your own journey? Yeah, like it definitely helped me. Like, so uh, the one thing I didn't talk about in my journey. So when he first signed me up, he told me to sign up as a coach and I was already, I'm super successful in my career and I make a lot of money. So I'm not going to lie about that. But I was like, I don't need fucking money. Like, I don't need to be a coach. And he's like, just do it. Uh, you know, if you do what you say you're going to do, you're going to inspire others. They're going to want to follow you. And then this is a way for you to pay it for it. I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay, if it's free, like, whatever. Let's do it. Um, but, you know, like, literally, like, after I signed up, then I looked at it. I was like, oh, like this is actually pretty simple. Like, because I came from a sales background, so for me it was easy to understand the whole compensation structure. And literally, I was a diamond coach in like 31 days. Um, and so that's my one piece of advice. Don't wait until you've made your transformation to start sharing the coaching opportunity. That is like the number one mistake you can make as a coach. Like if you're a coach, set your intention on helping people right away. Um, and because even when you're at your lowest, that's when you're going to get your most followers. Um, and, and that's and that's what helped me. Like I literally like on that August third, I did my come to Jesus pose. A long story. I shared like the deepest, darkest secret, shared all my photos as bad as I was, shirt off everything. And I literally like I had people just knocking down my door. Like I didn't know what coaching was, but I was just, you know, there were tons of smart people to help me out with it. So like you don't think you have to be a certain way or a certain like if you're genuine and you're and you really want to help people, people are gonna like really sense that. And the other thing about coaching, like there's a direct correlation to how much you share and to how successful you are. Like I can tell you, like when I'm not sharing, success points ain't coming in my account. Like once in a while they do for three weeks. Like that happen. That does happen once in a while, but not that often. So there's a direct correlation to how much money I make, to how much I share, and how much I invite. I mean, it's it's just a numbers game. It's really, I think people try to overcomplicate the whole coaching process, um, but it's really not. It's like invite, invite, invite. Um, one piece of advice, I said, your job is to share, and then it's their job to share. And it's just share, and then no, yes, and then you just funnel them out. It's like a funnel. Like, okay, like, okay, I ask you, okay, funnel out. Like, but then maybe you're in a different bucket. That's all it is. It's just the numbers game. And I think, like, a lot of people, they don't, they overthink the process. But I, I really think, like, the other advice I would say is, like, don't prejudge anyone. Um, because I've got coaches that are, like, millionaires. Like, and they don't like actively coach, but like they, they bring in like one or two people, they don't actively do it, but they're still a coach. But had I not asked, just assuming that you're a millionaire, you don't want to coach, then I would have not had that coach. So um, that's the other thing, don't prejudge. And the biggest thing is like write a list of like um, things you're passionate about and just share in those groups and just build organic conversations. That's how you're going to get your new, 
you go in these leagues. That's how you do it. You literally go in these leagues, you just conversate, and then as you like start talking to the same people, then you send them a friend request, and they're going to accept it right away. And they're like, oh, I like this guy. I'll talk to him in the group. And then you just share, like, the, and just let it happen organically. Like, there's people, like, I literally, you know, have shared, like, like, not even really invited them for like eight months. And then when I did, they're like, oh, like, I was waiting for you to invite me. Like, <laughs> um, wow, that's amazing. You do have a let's, question here. Let's see. Oh, so it's not the diet, it's the workout. So, like, I, I still to this day eat pure 21 day fix. 21 day fix saved my life. I think it's the easiest diet uh, for long term sustainability for people because um, the thing about 21 day fix, I think the biggest thing for me was being able to identify the portion sizes. That was the biggest thing. So, when I'm traveling, I can order protein and I, now I can visualize what four ounces of protein looks like. I can visualize what four, what a cup of veggies looks like uh, and like then I'll know to eat that. And so I can still do it if I'm traveling. So that's very easy. My, my comment was the workouts. If you keep doing 21 day fix, 21 day fix, you're going to, you're going to plateau. Right. Um, you know, you've got to like, and you know do something totally different so if you've been lifting then do a more hip based cardio like insanity and or you know if you've been lifting maybe go to punch and heat and do some dancing workouts and so i try to do opposite so like for example after i did and came came off hammer and chisel i did country heat you know and <laughs> Totally and I commend you for that. Not many yeah. men have done country yeah. heat, so I, thank I you. Do. I, well, I love Autumn. She so <laughs> really face. I had to support her. Um, but like literally, I lost what in country heat. I think I lost like twelve pounds. In Look heat. at that. Like no joke. Yeah. Like even after losing a lot of weight, so like it's legit. And so I try to like. So for example, after I finish Insanity, that's why now I'm doing P90X3. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a lot of high intensity cardio. Now I'm going back into lifting. And so I just cycle it. And then my body never knows what it's doing. But as far as eating, I follow 21 day fix. Period. The only thing I slightly differ from now is I actually do do a lot more fats in my diet uh, than what's recommended in uh, 21 day fix. And the only reason I'm doing that is because now I'm working on body fat percentage. Wow. And so you have to get in a fat burning state, and to do that, you have to have more fats in your system, yeah. and then shift your carbs, which is like sort of the basis of Shift Shop. Yeah. So if anyone's wondering if Shift Shop's gonna work, it's gonna work. It's gonna I work. No, I know. I'm, like, I'm excited for that one. <laughs> yeah. So like, when I was doing the workouts in Punta Cana, I was literally, if you were to think about the meal plan, I was basically in the third week of Shift Shop. I don't know what the meal plan of Shift Shop is, but I can pretty much tell you I was in a carb depleted state that week. And you saw I was able to do both workouts. You both had days. no carbs, no. Yeah, those were like no carbs. No I was drinking, literally, you stay I, clean. I was, I was literally less than 20 grams of carbs. Like I wasn't even doing Shakeology that week because Shakeology would have blew out 14 grams of my carbs. So I was literally, on broccoli and cucumbers that week. Wow, that is amazing. Oh, it works. I don't want to hear excuses from now on from my coaches because holy crap, like yeah. you were and there. When, with... when you get into a fat adapted state, it feels yeah. good. Like you've got endless energy stores. So yeah. like well, we're, it's more mental, like going without yeah. the, the starchy carbs is more mental thing. Right. Uh, your body's gonna pout and it's gonna cry and it's gonna complain, but it really does. The science behind it is pretty legit and it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's amazing. No, you were like I said, you you were kicking butt and just seeing I was dying and I'm, I look at you and you're not dying. You were still going. I'm like okay, <laughs> and then yeah, you spin around and I'm like all right, high five, high five. We're doing this. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I was less than 20 grams of carbs a day. Wow. No, no fruit, no nothing. I was that, literally on vegetables. That is yeah. amazing. Wow. And um, I did want to ask you, so 
when you started, when your coach Casey told you, all right, 21 day fix. Now, did you start on the cleanse? No, actually, no. Let me re let me yeah. rephrase this question. This is where I'm going with it. Along you, because you really didn't go into detail with like your health concerns, like, or I mean, besides like those harsh words that the doctor said, but like, what did your, your, like your blood, you know, levels look like your cholesterol, like all that stuff, like where they say, oh, oh yeah. So like I was like a uh, 12.9 A1C. So to put that in perspective, most people that are type two, they're sitting somewhere from like seven to eight and a half. And I was at 13. And like, when I tell people that most people don't even know it goes up that high. That's how bad, like I was literally eating like 15 to 17,000 calories a day of crap. And my sugars were constantly elevated at 400, almost constantly. Uh, and so I'd have blurry vision, I'd have a miss in my feet and everything. And so I had high cholesterol, my blood pressure was like 180 or something. So I was on high blood pressure medication I was on. Um, but like, at that point I was desperate and like I hated my doctors at that point anyway. So I wasn't gonna listen to them even they told me not to do it. Right. But I just listened to my body. So like uh, the one advice he told me was, was like just keep moving. And that's the most important thing. It's like keep moving. Even if you can't do it, just move for the whole 30 minutes. And so I just listened to my body. So like I didn't quit. Like, if I couldn't do something, then I'd just march in place. But I just kept moving, and I just listened to my body. And I literally, I started feeling good, like, within a couple of weeks. And um, actually, in about four months, I was off all my medication. Now, awesome. And that's usually, yeah, that's about the time it takes. Now, I'm assuming you they got you started with Shakeology and, like, following the meal plan, or how did how did yeah, and, and, I, and I definitely credit Shakeology. Like like I said, I've lost weight before, but I never got off my medication before. Right. The only difference in the equation was I was taking Shakeology, so I truly believe, like I know we can't say it's going to cure something, but I truly right. believe there's something about Shakeology that helps turn these numbers around. Mm -hmm. And I've literally had five people that are diabetic get off their meds like, within months after they started doing Shakeology and listening to me. So it's like, so I've seen it replicate enough times where I believe there's something to like the value of what Shakeology brings. Wow. The tips are staying on track long term. Um, my story, play every day. I <laughs> like yeah, your so for me, every day. <laughs> uh, my tip is, uh, so I do sales and so I'm sort of slavish to my calendar. So this may not work for everyone else. Okay. I literally have my workouts in my calendar every single day and I'm not going to miss my appointment at work. So why am I going to miss my workout if it's in the calendar? And so like I sort of use that same, same mindset, just like you're not going to miss your job just because you don't feel like going to your job. Like you're still going to go to your job. It's the same thing with working out. And really at the end of the day, it's just 30 minutes and uh, I just see it as my medicine. Like this is what keeps me where I'm not on medicine. It's like doing it, and so I don't really see it as a sacrifice. But the other thing is like, be really grounded in your why, and your why is not always going to be the same thing. Like I always thought my why was going to my why in the beginning was I just didn't want to die. Uh, now my why is different. Now my why is like I want to be an example moving forward. I have a mission where I want to help busy sales professionals just like myself uh, get on track with their um, get on track with their health, you know, and not be like me where you almost have to die, you know. And so, like that's why I've been uh, working on. I'm trying to get speaking gigs where I can speak at large companies and stuff like that. We talk about the dangers of the traveling lifestyle and being able to manage a healthy lifestyle when you do it. Um, so my, so my why has changed. So like, I have a really strong why, and when you have the why, it's got a bit like when you think about it, it's got to like make you cry think about it, and that's the thing. So it's like, oh, I just want to look good in my bathing suit, or oh, I'm getting ready for this wedding. Like, that's not a why. That's just that's bullshit vanity. 
uh, it's not a real lie. Um, and so it's really got to be something that really, like, when you think about it, like, you're almost going to die. Um, and that's the thing, like, be grounded in your why, and then everything's pretty easy. Amen. I love that. That's, yeah, I, I always tell my, my coaches and, and challengers, I say, you know, it's got to make you cry or it's got to make you angry. And angry cry, like you said, even with you, it, you that, yeah. that, you know, you got mad at that, that, uh, that doctor and you were like, well, I'm going to fight and I'm going to go against what he's saying that I can't do. You know, that that's part of your why too. That was anger in there. So it's, it's like, yeah. And, and also that's the other reason why I say like, always switch your programs up because you can like, if you keep doing it, like you'll get bored with it. And like, oh, I'm, I'm like, I've done this so much. I don't like, because I'm always doing a new program. I've always got something new to look for. And with each body on demand, it's like, there's literally like something new all the time. And there's always going to be at least like three new workouts every year or so and there's still a lot of workouts i still haven't done like i may do turbo fire or something i haven't done Rob turbo Brazil butt lift <laughs> yeah i'd like to do butt lift who knows like uh, in my game i mean leandro is is is, is amazing and let me tell you that uv2 workout yeah. like they're onto something because and i do uv2 no. UV two was it was amazing. We loved it. We're actually gonna have since I'm in the New York City area. We're gonna and we're with the New York City team. We're gonna have a live workout with Leandro. Uh, so we we will be doing some UV two. So yeah, that's it's amazing. He's he's very inspirational. Oh, tips for staying track on oh foods. How do you stick on without getting bored of the same foods? Um, uh, that's sort of harder for me because like. I can literally eat the same food all the time and not get So can I. So um, can I. Right? So I I'm not, like a little weird that way. Yeah. But what, what I will say to you, like, really learn about the different spices and some of the different oils out there. So, like, the thing that really helped me a lot, if you haven't done Ultimate Reset, do I'm about to do it. Reset. I have to do it. Yeah, do Ultimate Reset because it, it taught me about liquid aminos. It taught me about sesame oil, like stuff I never used before. It taught about all these different spices I really hadn't exposed my palate to. And then once I tried it in the Ultimate Reset, it's like, damn, this is like really good. Like, where's this been all my life? And like, I think some people, like, they just try to avoid some foods because they think they're bougie or they think it's weird. Um, but yeah, spices, um, that really helps, especially with the veggies. So uh, for like, just like tactical things like spices, if you haven't uh, seen Flavor God, Flavor God mm. spices are life. There's literally spices for everything. Like there's like habanero, there's everything spicy, there's garlics, there's lemon and garlic, there's chocolate donut seasoning, there's cheese flavors, and they're all paleo friendly and low salt which is very important. So like you can add a lot of flavor to your dishes, even though it's like the same dish. And just like try different cooking techniques, like um, broiling some meats or uh, trying them in stews. Um, you know, um, you know that, that, that's maybe like, think about the spices and the oils, that really helps a lot. So like what I do with a lot of my veggies, I incorporate a lot of coconut oil into my veggies. Mm -hmm and like just sea salt it seems weird but it's like very flavorful and it actually keeps you satiated longer um but the, the other thing is i always like try to the other thing is i, I try to say like um sometimes like trying to have too much variety will work against you at the same time so there's like a balancing act so so actually, actually there is a good tip I'll say. So I eat the same things a lot. And then one day a week, what I'll do is I'll do a special recipe. It's still clean, but it's a special recipe. But then when I do it, it actually feels like a cheat meal, if that makes sense. I like that, yeah. Like, like all week I'll be doing like, I'll be doing, I'll be on the broccoli, Broccoli, eggs, chicken, turkey, turkey train, like all week, sweet potatoes. And then all of a sudden I'll like just choose a recipe like a, like a paleo friendly or like a whole 30 friendly type 
meal that's like takes a little time and effort to do, then I'll make it and it actually feels like a cheat meal. And so that actually helps. It's like you you do basic, 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 and then you do a special meal. Basic, 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 special meal, and then that big, and then it, it actually gives you something to look forward to. Um, really good, I like that. <laughs> I like that. And um, how many, I'm sorry, that was like, this is one of my last questions. Um, yeah. How many rounds of the 21 day fix did you do? So you did one and then you jumped into T25 or you did just a one? Yeah, just one. But I, but for all programs, I followed the 21 day fix eating the whole time. Eating the whole time got you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, wow. so even, I, even with hammer and chisel and, and body right? beast, even with hammer and chisel and body beast that you have to like, up the carbs a little bit you get to eat a little yeah i mean i still follow the containers so it's still container based okay. it's just different okay. di uh, different container amounts right right right. Um, because now in body beast they actually have the conversions now yeah. so if you go on beach body on demand um it actually has the container equivalents now for body beast i love it, that they it, didn't have that before. It, it's a lot but it's and it sucks um but it, it works I, it's like a crazy amount of cards, more than I was comfortable doing, but I did it uh, because, like, all these programs had worked when I did them. So, like, who am I to second guess the programs? And I think that's the other, like, tip I can give people. Like, these programs have been tested, refined, and tested again. Do not think you are going to outsmart this program and put your stake on it. Just follow the program. It's gonna work, you, and, but you can't compare your results to everyone else, and that's where people get caught up. They get caught up in paritis, and they're like, "This isn't working for me because, oh, like I didn't lose as much as this other person." Well, everyone's on their own journey. There's different hormonal things. There's a lot of things to take into. That doesn't mean it didn't work, and so that's why one, you have to get off the scale. You have to take pictures all the time. You have to have other like, not like, how do my pants fit? How does my brain feel? Like. Just like, uh, how's my energy levels? Like, those are just as important as any like poundage or number on a scale. And like, I'm constantly assessing like all these things. Like, um, and actually, I focus on like more like my energy levels. Like, so if my energy levels are low, I know there's something wrong. Like, I'm like, you know, I'm not doing something right or something's not meshing with me. That I usually like follow my energy levels. So. But yeah, I like that. That John, that this has been amazing. You, I have to literally. I'm, I'm grateful that I recorded this because I had a few people that that they couldn't jump on and they were yeah. excited to hear it. They're like, "Are you recording?" I'm like, "Of course I am." So I'm actually gonna yeah. go back and listen because I did take a lot of notes. Yeah. Um, but you, like, I'm just. It, it's amazing. You're an amazing person. Thank you for sharing that. And. Um, yeah, thank you for not giving up. Like, thank you yeah. for because you you are your story. I'm sure it's already motivated hundreds, and it's just gonna yeah. continue to motivate more. I'm gonna wait with you for June fifth. I hope you're one of the the final uh, participants. I, I that I'm like looking at my like every time my phone rings. <laughs> I'm like, is it a three one zero? California. Uh, because like I'll know before, but like once I know, I can't tell anyone until oh, okay. it, but I have. I, I can tell you right now, I have not got the call yet. I can right, right, right. That, but right. when I do get it, I'm not going to let you know that I got it. But right. But they, but they wait, they make an announcement for people to start voting then, right? Right before Coach uh, No, it's going to be June 5th. They're going to like, June 5th, they're going to announce it and voting starts that day. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so. It's only going to be for a week. It used to be two weeks. Now it's just going to be a week. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, I also have my story on the Beach Body Challenge page. So if anyone wants to view it, like just see my journey, like you just see me now. Um, yes. But you'll see like when I was like really fat. And, yeah. Like, what I've transformed to. So like sometimes yeah. people like seeing the visuals. Um, yeah. No, no, no. I, I posted yeah. your, I, I think I grabbed your, your transformation picture and everybody was just like, oh my God. Like, yes, please. Can we have him on? I want to hear his story. So. I will. I will be sharing. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, just let me know. Just message me. I'm Definitely. pretty responsive. Definitely. So. Thank you so much, John, for your time. And um, I'll be posting. I I will have the recording up, so I'll actually also provide you with the link, so you have that just in case.
All right, thank you. Hey, thank you. Right. Have a good night. Have a good Thanks. Take right. care. Bye.